Now in this session we shall discuss addressing modes. What is addressing mode? You know that whenever one instruction executes then it requires operands to be operated on. Operands means data, opcode means the instruction itself. So, in case of addition, subtraction, they are the binary instructions that means they require two data. Increment, decrement, they are the unary instructions. So, they require only one data to get operated. Now, how this data can be obtained? Let us suppose, let us suppose I want to pay 50 rupees to one of my friends. I can pay it by cash, I can pay it by an account pay check. So, he will be, he will drop the check in his account and that fund transfer will take place. I can make the payment through um, self check. So, he will be reaching to my branch, bank branch and take the amount from the counter. I can make a payment say by draft. So, in different ways I can make payment to my friend. So, this is known as payment modes. But here it is addressing modes that means how an instruction can access operands to be operated on. So, let me discuss them. Here I have done some categories of this addressing modes. These categories are implicit, immediate, direct, indirect, registered addressing, registered indirect addressing, displacement addressing and this track addressing. Other than this we can have other one or two addressing modes, I shall discuss that one in my later videos. But these are the prime addressing modes. This relative ad displacement addressing mode can have three different other categories. One is the relative, another one is the best register and other one is the indexing. So, this is the total thing. Let me discuss this one one by one. So, now let me go for the implicit addressing mode. What is the meaning of the term implicit? That means, I am not mentioning explicitly, but inherently by default the instruction knows that from where it is supposed to access the operand. Let us give one example to you. Let us one example is say, say, say I am writing here say CMA. What is the full form of CMA? that is a complement accumulator. So, this instruction CMA stands for complement accumulator. That means, whatever the current value in the accumulator will be replaced by its once complement. So, now here you see in this particular instruction or along with this instruction, I am not mentioning any operand. It knows that implicitly it knows that the operand has to be accessed from the accumulator. This is known as implicit addressing mode. Next one is immediate addressing mode. What is the meaning of this immediate addressing mode? I am telling you. In case of immediate addressing mode, the instruction itself will be having opcode and another section is the operand itself. That means, there is no need to, to go here and there to access the operand. The instruction itself is containing the operand. So, this is known as immediate addressing mode. Next addressing mode, what whatever I am going to discuss is known as direct addressing mode. So, let me discuss this direct addressing mode. In case of direct addressing mode, so I have discussed implicit, immediate, now I am going to discuss the direct. In case of direct addressing mode, the instruction itself will be containing the opcode or the operation to be done and in the rest part it will be containing the address of the memory location. Address of the memory location where this operand can be found. So, that is the sin. So, here address will be referred, this is the memory. So, at the eighth location, at the a eighth location or a address location, I'll, I shall be getting my operand or data. Next one is my indirect addressing modes. What is the indirect addressing mode? So, instruction is there, it is containing opcode and it is containing the address. At this very particular address, like before, there is no operand, 
but that location is containing the address of the operand. So, address of the operand is being kept. So, it is known as indirect addressing mode. I do not know the phone number of Mr. Alam. So, that is why I have called Mr. Dotto because most Mr. Dotto knows the phone number of Mr. Alam. So, that is the indirect addressing. Next one is my registered addressing. In case of registered addressing, what will happen? The instruction we have the opcode and the registered name. Each and every architecture is having set of registers also known as register set. So, depending upon the register number, one of the registers will be selected by default automatically. So, unique identification, unique identification of the register can be done by the register name which is mentioned in the instruction registered addressing mode. Registered indirect addressing mode. So, I am going for the next stuff. So, registered indirect addressing mode. It denotes that instruction itself is containing opcode and the register name. If you go to that particular register in the register set, each and every register in the register set will have a unique name. Say, say R1, R2, R3 or say AX, BX, CX, DX registers or say in other microprocessors we are having EAX, EBX registers, what about the names? So, depending upon the register name, the corresponding register will be accessed. Like before, the register does not contain the operand, the register is containing the address of the operand. So, this is my memory which is containing the operand at which address this register is containing. So, that is why it is called registered indirect addressing like your Mr. Dotto and Mr. Alam's ex example. Next one is my displacement addressing. In case of displacement addressing what is happening? I am just telling you. Instruction is containing the opcode and it is also having other two parts. One is containing the register number, another one is containing the absolute or say address, address ok. I am not considering any kind of absolute word address. So, this register will be referred from the register set, the register will get selected, its content will be added with the address and thus the address thus formed will be known as the physical address and that physical address will be, will be mapped onto the memory to access the operand. So, this is my instruction containing register and the address. This register is containing one address, this address and this address will be added up to give you the physical address which will be mapped onto the memory to access the operand. This is known as displacement addressing. This displacement addressing can be categorized in three different categories. In case of relative displacement addressing, this register is a program counter this register is a program counter. So, whenever register is a program counter, then it will be known as the relative displacement addressing mode. Base register addressing mode means this register will contain the base address and this particular address will be the offset or displacement from that base address. And if you go on adding, you are getting the physical address to map the data in the memory. I am giving one example. Let us suppose the base address is 2000 and offset address is 20. So, if you go on adding, you are getting 2020 as the physical address. So, that is your base address displacement addressing modes. Next, <coughs> we are having the indexing. In case of indexing, this is this A register is containing the starting base address of the memory block and this R is containing the index you know in case of accessing data from an array I used to use A4, A5, A6. So, what is A? That is the starting base address of the array. What is 4? What is 5? That is the index of that array. So, if you go on adding this base address and the index then you are getting the physical address. So, same thing is happening here A is containing the base address and R is containing the index values. Now, adding 
it will give you the physical address. Last one is your stack addressing. Let us suppose we had our earlier video on say your um, zero uh, addressing modes in those cases, in those video zero instruction format rather. I had the instruction called add. So, where this add got to operands? It got to operands from the topmost two locations of the stack. So, it is known as stack addressing. It is known as stack addressing. That means, instruction knows the topmost one data if the instruction is unary, topmost two data if the instruction is binary will be the operands. So, where to get the data? From the tap, uh, from the top of the stack, from the top of the stack. So that is known as stack addressing modes. So I have discussed implicit. Example is CMA. I have discussed immediate. Operand is residing in the instruction directly. I have used direct. Instruction is containing address, and content of the address is the operand. I am going for indirect addressing mode. Instruction is containing address, and at that address. Operands address is residing. We are having this register mode. Register is containing the operand. Instruction is mentioning the register name or number. Register indirect. Instruction is mentioning the register name or number. At that particular register, operands address is residing. We are having this displacement mode like this one, where we are adding two addresses to get the physical address. And then we are having the stack addressing modes where we know that my data is available on the top of the stack. So, that is the issue. So, in this way the things are taking shape. Okay. So, we have completed this particular section. Now, in the next video I shall put one competitive table where all these addressing modes will be listed and you can get the idea what are the advantages, disadvantages, syntax of the expression. So, that will be a great help for you to answer your questions in the exam copy. Okay, thanks.